This love light of mine, I let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I remember singing this song in kindergarten. I would be in my school sanctuary, searching for the love light that was shining in others, wondering if they could see mine. I still look for it. So often I see it in moments. Sometimes I see it blooming bright. But for me, my life taught me so much about holding back my light. But I didn't know it. From the outside looking in, I had everything going for me. I knew I was loved. My parents created that foundation. But that didn't mean that I felt it. By the time that I was 26, I was lovingly placed in charge of my family business. There were so many skills and lessons that I had from my childhood of figuring it out, of finding a way out of no way. I was responsible. I had the practice of caring for my younger brother, of caring for my mom when she didn't feel well, of caring for my home. I didn't necessarily know how to care for myself. And that's where the disconnect began to happen. I would be in situations where I didn't know how to do something. <laughs> But I created a story that said, I'm not going to bother people, which turned into, I am a bother. So I wouldn't ask for help. And because I didn't ask for help, I didn't feel like I was enough. And because I didn't see myself as enough, I felt unworthy. But I was really good at leading. So there would be other moments where I felt great. Like, yes, I can make sure that someone else feels wonderful. I can take care of the needs of my family. And it did. It felt good until it didn't. In my 30s, I started ending all correspondence with faith, hope, and love. I have to tell you that signing an end of an email or a letter or a text message, faith, hope, love, Kiana, was uncomfortable. But I was called. I couldn't help myself. So, OK. I got used to just ignoring faith, hope, and love. Automatic signature was very helpful. <laughs> and it went out. What I didn't understand was faith, hope, and love was teaching me all about connecting to that light within. Faith. Faith is the illumination of your mind. I always thought that faith was in the parts that I can't see. But the truth is, faith is what's in your awareness. And sometimes you could see it with your eyes, but it's the things that you see. See about others, see about yourself. It's in the experience of seeing a truth that you either know or have taken the awareness to know of an experience of yourself and everything around you. And hope. Hope is the awakening of your heart. And it's delicious, and it feels so good. But hope are feelings, sensations. No one told me that the words that I was putting to my feelings were not actually feelings. They were words. And those words would invoke something a meaning that I placed on it, but that didn't mean that I could feel it. 
I wasn't tracking what was happening inside my body. So I could speak faith and I could speak hope, but I was doing the thing that I call logicking in it. I was telling myself that I am hurt and I have pain, that I am amazing, that I don't feel good. And the story would prove that to be true. So I'd walk into a room, mind you, I am just over six foot two, <laughs> thinking that nobody could see me. <laughs> because I couldn't see me. Thinking and feeling nothing, suppressing everything, because I didn't want to feel me. And that's when this beautiful lesson of love came into play. Love, that connected soul. Love has no conditions. I remember about five or six years ago, everybody was talking about how they wanted to be loved unconditionally. Like, of course, I want to be loved unconditionally. I want my family to love me unconditionally. I was divorced at this time, so I was going to find a man that was going to love me unconditionally. I can go on and on and on about all the ways that something was going to happen in the future where I was going to love and be loved and feel loved unconditionally. And then there was this moment where it hit me to be loved unconditionally means there are no conditions on love. It was devastating for me to realize how many conditions I placed on love. The judgments that I had of myself, of others, of thinking about others judging me, and how that kept me disconnected from my love, from myself, from everyone around me. And that lesson of love really came home when love was injected into how my mind was illuminated to everything that was in my awareness. So I saw with love how the story that I created about who I am and who I am not was holding me separate from engaging in anything that I wanted for myself in my life. Stopping me from stepping into the love of my parents, the love of my children, the love of my siblings, the love all around me. And I could feel that all of the sensations that were letting me know at all times where I was stepping into love, because it felt so good, and where I wasn't, because it felt heavy, and the words of depression, and sinking into all of those sensations that were just signals to show me how I was loving and disconnecting from all the love that is within me. It's really amazing when you start to interject love into everything that you do in your life. It shows you the full truth of who you are as your mind is illuminated in all of the experiences of faith. So now, when my thought goes into, oh, I don't feel enough, I don't see myself as enough, I can love that. I'm no longer running away from my pain and my hurt. I'm no longer trying to heal it with the logicking mind. I just place love into it. And the thing is that when you do that, you remember that love is patient. So as I'm on the journey of learning to love, to connect, 
I am patient with myself. And love is kind. And I am kind with myself. And there's no conditions, no expectations, no judgment in love. So there is no pride for me to stand in the love. It doesn't keep a record of any wrong. It just is. And the more the stories of my life that showed me how I was connecting and disconnecting into love, and how I could feel connected and disconnected from my love, I would place love into it and celebrate it, knowing that at moments it would feel so challenging, like, oh, really? But I could be in gratitude for it because I knew, I know I am on the other side fully becoming free in that connected experience of my soul with love. And the other part that's so beautiful is that I know whatever is for me is for everybody. So now I'm no longer judging myself for the way that I feel or the way that I think or the way that I experience life. I can love and ask, where is my love keeping me connected and how do I connect more? And I get to create that instead of having my yes be to something that I am unintentionally creating. I now create from a place of love where I step into the fullness of myself. At 6'2 and huge and big, I take up space. And sometimes I'm just like, not today, <laughs> not today. And I love everything that I see, everything that I am, and the awareness of all of it. And I claim it. I claim the love that I am. It is the power that rests within me. The power of seeing my full truth in all of the ways that I love and all of the ways that I can learn how to love expanded. And all of the ways that I feel and all of the ways that I love and feel expanded. And man, it's a superpower to be free as yourself. So amazing to step into this world that continuously asks us to see who we are, to know and how we feel, and to live in the light of our love. And this is not a journey over there. It's right here. And it's for me, and it's for you. And I love it so much, and I get to sing. This love light of mine, I let it shine. Let love shine, let love shine, let love shine.